chase. Yeah. Everyone, give me some space. Okay. Don't fall out, we fall in a place. Let's go. Every step walking with grace, amen. Keeping my foot off the brakes. So, this is the DIY waterproof Bluetooth speaker boombox that you can make with all the different components. And in this one, we decided to go with the Polk 6x9s, well, at least one of them, inside of a Harbor Freight 2800 Apache box. So we went ahead and put a switch right here to turn it on and off. We have a power port here with a DC connector so that we can charge the battery. So inside the case, I opted for the KBT lithium 4 amp hour battery and the 1001U amp. And these are 24 volts of power to the amp as well as from the battery. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna build that DIY waterproof Bluetooth speaker. And this is gonna be customized on how you want it, what speaker you want. Uh, you can do it in different boxes. You can do it in different size boxes. You can do more than one speaker if it fits. It's up to you. This, this is just the one I'm doing. There's many different ones you can do. Pretty much came to a about 160 bucks um, give or take, but we also got the button here for the power, which is kind of, uh, well, that's needed. We want a button for power and everything on here is going to make it waterproof because they're going to have a rubber seal on it or on the speaker. What we're going to do is we're going to do some silicone. So that way it is waterproof as well. You can literally put this in the pool or lake or whatever, and let it float around if you wanted to, or drop it in there pretty much where we want and it won't harm this as long as you do it the way you're supposed to now i did 3d print a case for the amp itself you don't have to um but i have a 3d printer and i did 3d print one and you can pick them up I, there's a facebook group i'll link that below too that has a lot of good instructions and a lot of good people on there with a lot of can answer a lot of questions too and the guy on there that runs it, I believe, I believe it's the guy that runs it, sells these cases too, if you want to. If you don't, I'll leave links of how you can make these with a 3D printer, but also if you want to buy them, I'll leave them for, for him to sh uh, sell you. And then, so we want to charge this, and I don't have to open up the case every time I want to charge it. And so I have this DC charging uh, connector. So this will be waterproof and we'll drill a hole in the case, wherever. And that way I could just, the plug-in that came with the battery, I can plug it in to charge it whenever I want, I don't have to open up the battery every time. So that's kind of nice. I do have some sound deadener that I have that I had le left over from something else. You don't have to put that in there, but if you want to, you can add that too. Uh, lever connectors, those are really nice. Here are the, the Wigos, uh, the lever connectors. I don't know if you can, uh, these little lever connectors are kind of nice. You can uh, put the wires in there and snap them shut, or you can do crimp connectors, whatever you want to do, solder, Twist them together. It's up to you on that. Whatever you want to do, that makes it quick and easy to do. Does that does can add to the price a little bit, but we're gonna get we're gonna install this. So I did buy a spacer that was 3D printed, and I think they have 3D printed files for this too. My printer is not big enough to print this. It's about ten bucks extra. You don't have to do it, but it does have the grooves from the patchy case in it already, so it automatically centers. There we go automatically centers it in there and that way you don't have to shave down the grooves. So now this is for a six by nine. Now I can trace this out so I can cut this. So I'm going to use a paint pen here make it easy on us. There we go. And you can use a silver or whatever case you have, you can use whatever is going to work out. So now we have our cutting area and we're gonna drill a hole and then I'm gonna use my jigsaw and cut this out. All right, so now let's get the speaker out and put it in here. Well, first of all, we're going to put this on here and then we're going to get the speaker and make sure it fits. All right. Now, obviously we went Polk since these are Polk, Polk speakers sitting up. There we go. We got some room. Now I didn't drill the holes for this because it does come with some 
screws. And we're just gonna go ahead and screw it down in. So instead of uh, gluing around here, I'm gonna go ahead and glue right here first, and then I'm gonna set this in place. Um, that way I know where I can set it in place and I don't over glue. Now just be cognizant of the silicone. It will, once it gets pressed out, it will come out a little bit sometimes. Don't mess with it now. Wait till it dries and it'll come off really easy once it dries. Standing on the polks, there is a hole back here that when everything feeds through here, it drains out the hole. So we're gonna put a, some silicone in the hole. Now with the sticker removed, you can see it right there. So we're gonna fill that with silicone. Now we can put the silicone bead around here real quick and put the speaker in. Now, this, there's a sticker that goes on top of this. We pulled it out on the pulks. There's a hole down here and we want to fill it with silicone because once you put water in here, it drains through that hole. So again, we're going to be reminded on how this is going to be. So here's the pulk and then we're going to set this in ever so carefully. I'm going to find the holes. There we go. Now we're going to use this grill so we can put the grill on top. And that'll take care of most of the ugliness. And then we can screw these in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the sound deadening and it's not quite, the one I have is not quite gonna fit. So we're gonna measure it here just a little bit and cut it down to size. Once it's cut, you can go ahead and peel the back off and lay it into the box. Now make sure the box is clear of debris and all of that and ready to go. So I used brake cleaner to kind of get it cleaned out and rubbed clean and press it all in and you're gonna be good to go to move on. So on the 1000 U amp, it has two different power areas. You can go ahead and wire right in or you can use the DC connector. We're gonna use the DC connector for this. Just make sure you understand that both of these are right here on the right hand side. This left hand side is for the speaker. So to get these pins pushed out, there's a hole right here and you can kind of get a clip or a clip this in there and push them out. And then we're gonna get some pliers and pull them out. So that way we can pull the top off and drill in this, get this prepped, ready to go without getting any of the shavings in here. So now we got to decide where we're gonna put everything. So some people take the remove this and put the power button right here. So we can do that and put the power button up the top. And this is, uh, press in or just a, it's not a momentary switch, but just a regular switch you press in and it powers the device connect, and then allows you to connect to the Bluetooth, turns on the amp, ready to go, turn it off like that. Then we got the battery, probably put the battery about right here or so. Then we got the amp and the battery. So the battery is gonna have its pigtail right here. Probably put the charging port right here, could put it on top, it's up to you. Put the amp down here. Uh, that way we're ready to go on that and, uh, we'll go from there. You can use Velcro. I'm going to use Velcro to, to tape the amp and the battery to the actual device. And then we'll cut the stuff out. Wiring in the amp, we got the power wire here, but now we're gonna do the speakers. And so you've got a plus and a minus. Notice on the left-hand side is for speaker. You'll see on the actual board here, it says SPK plus and minus. I don't even see that. There it goes but that's what you're gonna see right there. Now we got the wires here and you can strip them. They were already stripped for me, but the gray wire with no black on it is the positive. And then the wire with the black stripe is the negative for my situation here. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put those into the connector here and then screw the, it's basically a clamp. Then when you screw it down, it's gonna clamp the wires into the connector itself here. You know, to use a screwdriver for that. Mm -hmm. 
Now that's done, and you can slide the wires through the case here, if you have a case. And then once you slide the wires through, then you can uh, put some screws into the case to mount the amp to the case. You can use any screws you want here. It can be any, just anything with a point to it uh, and pretty short. Now we're going to drill the hole for the power switch. And I just went ahead and got a drill bit about the size of that brass connector, a little bit bigger than that. So I can drill that one out first. And so drill that so that I have a pilot hole to go for. Do not touch the brass connector when it goes or it comes out. It is hot. Yep, it's hot, Reed. So this is where that power switch is going to go. And now we're going to use the step bit and drill it bigger until we get to the right size and we can put that through. Now we got the switch installed and it's a little press switch. It will light up once we get it powered and it has this wiring harness we click in. This is a five wire harness and we don't use the yellow wire. They do provide you here, I'm gonna show you in a second, a wiring diagram, at least the one I bought. So you can kind of understand how to wire this up. We'll provide a wiring diagram on the screen here in just a little bit, but this is where we're gonna go ahead and wire this up. We're gonna use the lever connectors so that way we don't have to crimp or solder or anything like that. It makes it really quick and easy to do. So now we're gonna go ahead and wire up the switch to the amp as well as the switch to the battery. And then we're gonna also, once we're done with that, we're gonna wire in the actual charging port. Here is the moment of truth here. We're gonna power it up, make sure everything's good. And now it's connected to my phone, Bluetooth. We're ready to go. I kind of did this last before I mounted everything is I drilled a hole for the charging port. I hadn't decided until now where to put it, but here we go. I got the power switch going in here. I got a red and a black wire and we just wire the red and black to each wire and the battery. So I went ahead and put the skinny piece of foam down at the bottom to hold the battery up because at the bottom of this case, it's beveled and it was kind of making the battery go at a weird angle. So I want it to be at least on the flat part. I'm gonna Velcro that on right now here. And we already Velcroed the case for the amp on. I didn't show it, but no big deal here, but we're going to Velcro this to the case side. And then we also wired up the power switch, or at least that right here. We're going to go ahead and tuck these wires around. We're going to kind of tuck them neat. You can zip tie these up if you want to make them nice and neat. But what we're going to do is going to put the second piece of foam down and cover those up. And so that way you really don't have to deal with them if you don't want to. So here I am marking out where all the devices are so I can cut them out in the foam so that they can go through. So you got the switch here, you got the battery here, and then you got the amp. And then we're going to cut those out so that way they are lined up pretty nice here. So here's everything nice and neat in here. I did take the second thick foam out because it was all the way up to the top here. And it was going to not allow for this to push down or it'll push down quite a bit. I didn't want to do that. So I got the battery here, the amp here, the switch power off and on. And then I got a little cutout for the DC charger for the connector. Now, what I've seen some people do is they put the battery charger inside here. So that way it's always with you and you don't have to remember to bring it, which that's probably what we're gonna do. But to see the wiring, I didn't clean it up very much. So it's like right here. You can zip tie it and clean it up. It's up to you. Honestly, no one's gonna see that. So I don't really personally care. If you're going to sell this box to somebody else, you might clean it up with zip ties and some wire or like tie downs. 
it does pull up on the speaker wire a little bit from what the wire that I was provided for, with the speaker. I'm not really too worried about it. This is as far as it's going to go. And if it does pull up a little bit, it won't matter. It'll give it more slack once I close it. So here are my final thoughts on the build itself. This is the first one I built. Probably going to build more. The nice thing about this amp is you can pair this amp with another amp just like it. So that way you can have more than one speaker or more than one Bluetooth speaker going. So you can have stereo or more than you can have five, six, seven if you wanted to. It's up to you. You can decide to change out the speaker if you wanted to. You can do a different speaker. You can do a six and a half. You can do a smaller case. We talked about that at the beginning. Uh, obviously, the larger the speaker, the more of a bass and all that. Uh, you can get more bass out of smaller speakers. You got to spend more sometimes. Doing this was pretty easy. Uh, wiring wasn't too bad. I, I got a lot of wiring experience with 12 volt and all that. So it's very, very similar. Uh, it wasn't hard at all. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask questions down in the comment section. I'm here to help you guys as well. Uh, but for the price, I mean, it beats out those uh, JBL or Dolphin speaker boxes. Those things are huge. They may have a little more depth in their bass and sound, but this thing, I 100 feet away, half volume, and I could, it was very clear, very loud. So if you're looking for something that's easily portable, doesn't break the bank it's a little bit more than maybe buying a little jbl bluetooth small speaker but it's gonna be way better than that anyways you can do whatever you want with it different speakers different cases different designs but it's a little bit more about 160 bucks more depending on the speaker you want to buy and but it's definitely cheaper than one of those dolphin speakers or party box speakers and more portable obviously i will list everything that i bought down below in the description uh, along with the 3d print stuff so if you want to if you want to buy what i have or buy some of the stuff you're, it's up to you. It's in the link description below. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm here to help you out along your build. If this is your first time to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos like this, more tech reviews, home automation, home and automotive how-to videos. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.